I know you ain't serious. It's the first of the month. I know. We dress nice, we go in, all on the books, we meet with the bankers. This Mr. and Mrs. Black Enterprise was your idea. Yeah, but I think you're piling now. Math team, you guys wear uniforms. <laughs> I should have never told you about that. You can never let it go. This Fair Play 2333, and I want to give a salute to all my cinema cronies. Welcome back to the Power Book Multiverse and Cinema Show, where you get the latest in Power Universe and Cinema Breakdown. I, I, I just want the life that niggas can't afford. We, whip, we whipping them babies once you can't aboard. Not looking for beef, but some you can't avoid. And if I'm on a mission, it's you on the voyage. Every first of the month, James St. Patrick and Tasha would get dressed and they would go to the bank. And while going to the bank, they would do this to keep up their legal appearance, but to also check on their assets. This was a smart move by James. He came up with the idea for them to do this to be a united front, but also at the same time, this was James trying to secure his way out. And he possibly brought Tasha into it, not only because she was his wife, but also to show her something different. Listen, maybe his thought process was if she can see what we doing with this legal money and how it's growing, it's not like the drug money, but it's money and it's growing steadily. And if we work hard at it, we can get more and we can be legal maybe i can change her mind so when you look at this this makes that closet scene even more um egregious from tasha's standpoint um even when tasha was in the club and she looked at the receipt of how much they made that night and she was uh oh, this it um she wanted that fast money and she was willing to sacrifice ghosts to get it um she didn't care she just wanted him to be the biggest goddamn drug dealer in new york and ghost wanted better for himself he wanted better for his kids. He wanted better for his wife. He wanted better for the people around him and his family. All of this moving away from the streets was ghost idea, but the people around him didn't see the bigger picture. Now, the real thing I'm here to talk about is Tasha actually being a mathlete. She was on the math team. So when you see all of these moves that she's making behind the scene, when she putting the money together, when she's teaching Tyreek how to count the money and saying, OK, this is your part. This part is for the plug. Um, when you see her doing the accounting and Tommy say, hey, maybe we need to call Tasha in to teach you how to do it, Holly. Now, Holly was smart. She caught on. Lakeisha, she wasn't smart. She didn't catch on. She was ready to put Tommy in jail and lose her shop and lose cash and all of that. So Tasha was a very integral part. So when we look back and we see the situation where um, James was in the police stop and Tasha said that she took his gun and put it in her purse. I'll cover that more in depth at a later date. But when she said that ghost was not only thinking about the street aspect of it, he was thinking about the smarts aspect of it. She was a math leap. He knew that she was just as smart as him, but she was caught up in the hood rat life. She wanted that quick money. She was used to the quick money and it probably gave her a thrill to be honest. And when she was growing up, she never outgrew it. Now, my personal observation is that um, Tasha came around ghost life at the point where Angela left. Angela left, ghost started hanging out with Kanan and he met Tasha on Kanan's side of the track. We can tell the difference. Now, another thing, a lot of y'all been saying that Angela is the one who taught ghost Spanish. I don't think that's true. I think ghost was already learning Spanish in school and he just so happened to meet Angie and maybe Angie tutored him with his Spanish. Now, that would actually, side note, that would actually be a dope way if that's how they met. If Ghost and Angela met based on like Ghost was taking a um, Spanish class, but they met young. So um, I think it was like, I can't remember how young they said they was when they met. But anyway, that's what would be dope is if they were taking a class and the class was basically Spanish and Ghost needed a tutor and maybe the school assigned Angela or maybe Ghost had saw Angela in the hall and he stopped her and he used Spanish as a way to talk to her, even though he may have already knew Spanish. Now, running through the streets, you know, you pick up on different things like you may not pick up on Spanish, but 
if um you running through different neighborhoods you may pick up on their slang you may pick up on the type of words they use for different things like um it's worldwide that people call a gun a blick now but um in some places you know they call a gun a pipe yo go get the pipe um in some places they call a gun a strap we've heard 50 cents say that some people call a gun a, 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 a gat but some people get intricate and they call a gun different things in new york in the capone and noriega era they would call guns after dogs any dog name hey go get the rock rockwilder hey your girl got that chihuahua on her hey bro i left my uh cocker spaniel upstairs can you go grab it for me and so the reason they use those type of codes is so you know what you're talking about your people know what you're talking about but the person who in danger that don't know they in danger don't know what you're talking about so this could be something that james just picked up from doing work with spanish people being in the spanish neighborhood but he played with angela like he didn't know what was going on or he didn't really know spanish when he did all along now back to tasha she had so much potential to be so much more um they could have ran the enterprise they had three clubs all it was gonna take was a little time for them to build them and if she would have wanted to leave the streets james would have never wanted to leave her and she could have had the life she wanted but instead she tricked herself out of position and in life ladies and men don't trick yourself out of position some of y'all at home listening to this right now thinking that it's better over your side piece house. Trust me, it's not. Because if it was, you wouldn't still be staying with your girl. You would leave your girl. You would say, you know what? It's over with. I'm leaving my girl. And ladies, those of y'all who think that y'all side man is going to pay all your bills because he got all his money. Trust me, especially if he know you got a man, he got other women and you just somebody on his list. So learn from Tasha St. Patrick. Don't trick yourself out of position in life. I think that this story goes a lot different if Tasha plays her role and if Tasha sees the big picture. The irony is that Tasha was telling Tyreek that Ghost was selfish when she was the one who was selfish all along. Oh, I had a guy and I don't remember the exact comment, but he said basically um, it's crazy to blame Tasha with all the stuff that Ghost did. Um, I don't know how a man could actually see this and say that. I don't know how a woman could actually see this and say that. Listen, before Ghost ever laid down with Angela, Tasha episode one hopped in the back of the car got naked and started playing with herself in front of a 19 year old somebody who was mentoring her son somebody who was being mentored by her husband and then from that day on she stopped it because she felt secure about ghost but then when she needed more information she started trying to manipulate sean and tasha whole thing was she just wanted to move how she could move to keep herself in a winning position and if we remember tasha told ghost that she wanted him to kill canaan and he said instead of killing canaan um, I'll put him in jail. Let's set him up, whatever the plan may be. Right. So when we look at this, everything started from Ghost trying to please Tasha, just like Tasha came up with the plan to kill Ghost. And Tyreek said, you know what? I'm going to take over this plan because I want to protect you. So I'm going to kill Ghost. And the same way Tasha said, yo, we should kill Kanan uh Kanan I mean Ghost came up with the plan and said you know what I want to protect you and my family and I want to see us move forward so I'm gonna uh put Kanan in jail everything started with um Tasha now I'm gonna tell y'all something and I mentioned this in another one of my video I took some parenting classes right and they right out of Atlanta if any of the fathers want to take them on here it's called Fathers Incorporated you can sign up with a guy named Jovin Foreman Foreman f-o-r-e-m-a-n he's a great guy right but you can do all the classes online so it don't matter where you at in the world now i signed up for those voluntarily because i just wanted to learn some new things and one of the things they teach you in that class is radical responsibility now what is radical responsibility radical responsibility is when you go back to the source of your first bad decision 
and you figure out why it's your fault. And in figuring out why it's your fault, not only are you able to be happier because you're not looking at the other person like this person doing this or that to me, you looking at the situation from the standpoint, I brought this on myself, which makes you happier because now since you brought it on yourself, you can start working towards a solution instead of constantly pointing the blame at the other person. Now, what's an example of radical responsibility? Now, this is for the mans. Let's just say you have a child's mother and she's not doing things correctly and you feel like she trying to undercut you you feel like she not letting you see your child she you feel like she putting you on child support you feel like every time you see her she want to fight you feel like every whatever the case may be and some in some aspects of the situation man let's be honest sometimes you may just be overreacting to the situation just like when tasha we saw tasha version of what was happening with james st patrick and everything was over exaggerated man sometimes we can over exaggerate too but anyway the thing you need to do is go back to the very first decision you made or didn't make and then that'll let you know why everything is your fault so let's just say your uh child's mother is not allowing you to see your child well guess what you need to go back go back go back go back and see where she gave you that first red flag and now you know how when guys first get in relationships with women they believe everything they say because everything she doing is so good to you she talking nice to you she cooking every day every night you ain't start cheating yet or you ain't start neglecting the relationship not giving her attention whatever the case may be y'all in the honeymoon stage and at this point she's just venting to you all the time and she's telling you oh i'm not letting this guy see his kid because he's not doing xyz well guess what that was five years ago before you got her pregnant that she showed you the sign that when she don't get her way she'll keep a child away from a man but because you failed to view that and you ignored the situation or the circumstances now you're in a position to where you are now because you didn't follow your first mind and say wait this is a red flag i need to get away from her now so that's what radical responsibility is radical responsibility is going back to the first sign of a red flag that you saw that you ignored and now once you identify that you can understand that wait this not her fault it's my fault because i put myself in this situation i laid down with her i saw the red flags i didn't choose to cut her off right then and there i decided to say oh i'm a real dude i'm better she ain't gonna treat me like she treat him and in life people who treat people bad men or women they willing to treat anybody bad it's not just gonna be one person they gonna treat bad they will treat anybody bad so um you have to understand that in a lot of these situations you're not special and for my young guys who listening to this and when i say young i mean between 16 to 25 16 to 30 right um i want y'all to understand that this could save y'all a lot of money in court fees this could save y'all a lot of time without being lied on and having to go to jail and women um i'm talking to the man because i'm a man but y'all also can look at life and takes a uh, radical responsibility um and i'm gonna be short about y'all because i'm not a woman so i don't want to you know be all up in y'all business but let's just say for an example uh, your baby daddy not taking care of his kids the way you think he should, right? And you got one kid by him. But you can always go back to five years before you was a single mother with Junior trying to raise him on your um, income in a single parent household. And you can look back and you can say, damn, this guy was running the streets when I met him. He already had two baby mamas. He barely saw the children that he had then. I should have saw that as a red flag and got away from them. But um, salute to y'all, man. Uh, if y'all are on Facebook, join the group Power Book Multiverse and Cinema. That's my power group for all of us to come in to interact. 
this video right here will be my fourth video of the day um probably won't end up being my most popular video because it's an og power video a flashback but i think i dropped my biggest gem in here and every once in a while when it applies and i can uh give y'all some real life advice based off the power universe I'm going to do it every time, whether y'all like it or not, because this is something they call putting the medicine in the candy. Um, some of y'all would have never sat down and listened to something about fatherhood. Some of y'all would have never sat down and listened to something about radical responsibility. But because y'all here for the power universe, y'all got this gem that y'all can take through y'all life. Y'all can pass on to somebody else. Oh, and don't forget um i said it's the 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 parenting class is called fathers incorporated if you are in atlanta or anywhere in georgia it's based out of georgia but because the classes are online you can take them from anywhere in the world you just gotta go through the process answer the questionnaire sign up in man big salute to job informing man he actually told me about the class and I was just like, you know what? I think I will try it, man. So um, it's helped me a lot over the time that I took it in. The great thing about it, man, is if you've never gotten a high school diploma or you never got a college degree or you never got a certain type of certificate, after you finish this class, you actually get to go to a graduation. You actually get a gap, a cap and gown that you are allowed to keep. The cap and gown says Fathers Incorporated. And I think that's important. And you also get a certificate for, for completing the class. But the reason why I think this is important, because you able to look back and see that you had to follow through to finish something. You able to say, you know what? I put my mind to it and this is the first thing I can finish. And once you start seeing yourself finish things and accomplish goals, you start saying, well, if I could finish this, what else can I finish? So salute to all my fathers out there salute to all my mothers out there and one thing i want us all to do is to come together as as a family you know what i'm saying if you a man uh with a wife or a girlfriend or a baby mama and if you are a, a woman with a baby father a husband or a boyfriend um try to understand the opposite person perspective one thing tasha didn't do she didn't try to understand ghost perspective ghost perspective was he was tired of the life he was living and he didn't want to continue to live over his shoulder for the rest of his life and although that was something that tasha did man you also have to be able to understand from the perspective of your woman who don't want you to have to live over the shoulder for the rest of your life who wants you to get out of the streets who wants you to maybe go get a cdl or um maybe take that money that you got and start some type of clothing brand or some business hey and everybody don't need a mixtape bro it's so much other stuff you can do in the streets besides rap um you can start a clothing brand you can start a a a, a web series a, a hood series or something like that and just keep thinking keep expanding uh salute to the cinema cronies Check out the original Chicago Hood web series, No Time to Play Fair, Chicago Do's and Don'ts episode. It's out now, written by, co-directed by, and starring me, Fairplay2333.